Okay, so here we are. What are we going to talk about? Well, now that we've said that, let's talk about you. Me? You yeah. want to talk about me? Right. Why would somebody in their right mind go out and photograph on the day of the Sandy? Somebody's got to do it. I lived so close to where this was all going on. Uh, it was right in my backyard. Um, I have a camera. Uh, I'm a documentary photographer. So I just jumped to the call and I said, this is something I have to do. And you mentioned about uh, you were a half a block away? Yeah. The water came a half a block away from where I was living. And your neighbor? Did you know, you mentioned about uh, one of your neighbors? Yeah, one of my neighbors, who I didn't know personally, uh, went out during the hurricane and got electrocuted by a downed power line. I guess that was... I think more of my neighbors were upset, not that he died, but that because of uh, his stupidity, the electric company had to turn off the grid on, uh, you know, for a couple of hours. Uh, so people didn't have uh, cable TV. They were more upset about that than about a human that died. What? That, that's what they were talking about? Yeah. Did you say anything? Or you just listened? No, I didn't see what had happened. Uh, it happened in the middle of the night. I was sleeping. I heard about it the next morning. So you... You... Uh We're one of the first people to go into Breezy Point. Breezy Point. Tell me about it. Was, Breezy Point was completely devastated. One uh, little area there. And uh, just to describe what it looks like, it's... I don't think Breezy Point and the Rockaways were ever really meant to be lived on. Uh, I think it's more of like a barrier to protect the main part of the island from big waves uh, but people live there um, parts of the rockways are quite beautiful uh, there's very nice beaches there. there's nice surfing um, but the area of breezy point is surrounded by water on three sides it, that's like three opportunities uh, for a flood from uh, any any of the three directions and uh, one area there was a fire, and it burnt about 80 or 90 houses in one small neighborhood. Terrible. Really, really devastating. So I went there the next morning after that had happened, and the roads were blocked off. Uh, they didn't want anybody coming in there, didn't belong there. Uh, they shouldn't have looting or, or any other bad things uh, going on there. So I did something uh, different. I went on a bicycle, and I saw the roadblock from two blocks away, so I took my bike off the road onto the beach, and I walked along the beach uh, for five blocks, and then I went back to the road uh, on the other side of the roadblock, so nobody questioned who I was or why I was there, and then I went and I was taking photos of uh, the devastated areas in Breezy Point. Uh, part of the area was reduced to ashes. What's the, uh, a memory that sticks in your mind about, uh, and, and thoughts? A breezy point? Yeah. I saw people coming back to their homes the next day to see if they could salvage anything. Uh, and most people couldn't salvage anything. It was all ashes. But people were on their hands and knees, families digging through rubble, debris, ashes. And I saw one woman pull this, like, porcelain... Uh, vars uh, out of the rubble and she jumped up and said this belonged to Aunt Edna she made it uh, and the whole family uh, got together and started hugging each other and they said you know 
Aunt Edna is no longer with us, but now we still have one thing to remind us of her. So they were so happy. And that was the only thing they were able to salvage from their house. Everything else, their stuff, their clothes, everything was burnt. Uh, there was another family uh, that one of the kids found her, her doll. Uh, and she was clutching it. Uh, and then the whole family uh, were hugging, you know. <clears throat> the, there was another family that were going through a photo album that was burnt. And the woman looked up and said, you know what? I don't have any photos of my kids anymore. But at least I still have my kids. Meaning, you know, everybody was safe. Uh, it, it was... That area was completely devastated. Unlike other places that just had floods, you know, they pumped out the water and uh, then life went back to normal. So, what did you, you walk away feeling from that, from just the Breezy Point experience? Well, we take so much for granted. Uh, Joe, in our lives, we take so much for granted. It could all be gone in a minute. Uh, a flood, a natural disaster, a fire. Uh, I mean, everybody should just turn to the person next to them and give them a hug. You know, just there's just so many things we have to learn to appreciate more. And and did it make you a, a nicer person? No, I, I, I'm a terrible person. Yeah. It wouldn't make me any nicer. Yeah, that, that's um, an understatement. Mm -hmm. uh, when you started shooting there, you, you have some very interesting photos. Any photos that stand out in your mind? From Breezy Point or the yeah, hurricane from, in general? from Breezy Point. Even a photo you didn't take. It, there's a couple of uh, photos in Breezy Point that stand out. Um, but the place was just mud and ash. And... Some people ran so quickly when the flood was coming in, they didn't have time to grab anything. Some of them left even without their shoes. And when they came back the next day, uh, they were going through the rubble of their former houses, uh, whole families barefoot with no shoes on, but such uh, a mud stains on the bottom of their feet from walking through the mud and the dirt. And you could see that I have a photo of people walking down one of the small lanes, and as somebody's walking and their foot comes off the ground, you see how dirty it is underneath. And you can get a real sense of what was going on there from that footprint. How did they respond to you being a photographer there? And how did you respond to being in the middle of this war zone? Most of the time when I take my photos, I do it with stealth. I'm in and out, I'm quick. And people don't even notice me there, even with a huge camera. Uh, when I went to Breezy Point, I had two cameras because I didn't want to change uh, lenses. So, so I had one telephoto and one wide angle. So I was just flipping between the two cameras and um, just being quick. I don't know if anybody even spoke to me or asked me who I was. Uh, in Brighton and in Coney Island and in other parts of Brooklyn, uh, when I was going through some of the areas that were very badly flooded and people saw me with cameras they invited me into their homes they wanted to have me document the um, the damages uh, and the floods and the hell that they were going through and uh, and I did it and um, it was not easy uh, I lost it at one point I, I, I lost it when I saw a woman coming out of a flooded basement holding a wedding album and the wedding album was soaked and she set it out on a railing in front of the house and opened up the pages so they had a little bit of a chance to dry and be saved and she said that her husband passed away and all she had was her wedding photo of him and then I realized just how devastating this flood was and I had to walk a few blocks away and, you know, regain my composure. I, I lost it. Uh, 
is a pretty intense moment. 